and Steph here. Welcome back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. Today we are going to just be doing like a quick little get ready with me. I'm going to talk about where the heck I've been for the last two weeks. I'll give you one clue. The word is migraine. And uh, we're also going to talk about why I paused my Ipsy Plus, my Ipsy Glam Bag Plus subscription for the month of November and why I'm thinking about possibly canceling it next month. So if that sounds interesting to you, just stick around. All right, guys, so we are just going to go ahead and get ready today like any other day. I am. I'm not going for like a glam look necessarily, um, but I do want to look kind of nice because I am doing a virtual audition for a play tonight. So I want to look put together. Um, I'm probably going to use a little bit heavier foundation today than a normal every day just so that it looks good on camera. Um, and later today, I know I'm a couple days late, but I am planning on um, also filming my October favorites video. Um, just kind of a short video with some products that I've really been loving. Um, I didn't get around to doing that at the end of the month like I had intended, unfortunately. So I'm just going to start off with my eyes. Um, now I will say, I don't know how well my eyeshadow is going to go on. I haven't actually worn eyeshadow in a few days because for some reason I've had some like irritation on my eyelid and I don't know if you can kind of see there like all that patchy dry skin. I don't know what happened, but like Saturday morning I woke up and it was all swollen and red and like, um, really dry and stuff. And I don't know if there's like one of my facial serums or something I somehow got on my eyelid and I dried it out really bad or if it's just like the weather shift and, um, you know, the weather changing and getting drier that it's making my skin dry out. But, um, so I've just been kind of like not wearing any makeup or anything or putting any product on my eyelids the last couple days to kind of let it like dry out. And I've been putting a little bit of like A and D ointment on it and that seems to be helping as well. So anyways, I'm going to go in with this e.l.f. Um, bite size eye quad and this is in the uh, cream and sugar is the color on this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and go into that first, um, light shade and get started. I'll be using all four of these shades on my eyes today. So typically there I was um, being able to post like two, three times a week. Um, and so, and then I kind of got sidelined recently. So um, the story is, so I have been a migraine sufferer for about nine or ten years now it started I got my very first migraine when my son was like five months old and uh, I didn't even know what it was at the time and then it just continually and progressively got worse from there till I eventually talked to my doctor about it who then sent me to a neurologist and I had a bunch of tests done and yada 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 and I have gotten migraines since then and I've been on all different kinds of treatments everything you can possibly think of I have taken maintenance meds that include beta blockers that would work for a time and then stop I've taken anti-seizure medications that are used off-label for migraine control or migraine suppression I've used um, some anti-anxiety meds that are used off-label for migraine suppression and just like everything will work for a little while and then it will just like eventually stop so um then recently so i got up to the point where i was having about 16 migraines per month i would say about and uh it was miserable like i couldn't even ever make plans because i thought for sure like oh i'm gonna get a migraine and then it's gonna be ruined because i'm gonna be completely sidelined for the rest of the evening um, and so it really had a huge negative impact on my life. So I got, uh, you know, I was up to about 16, like I said, migraines per month. And I actually, I should go back. So I would previously, I would just get migraines randomly. Um, the only real trigger I was ever able to identify was like, you know, big shifts in the weather, which I know was common for a lot of people, but I never identified any foods or scents or anything like that that was like a known trigger um and so that like I was getting you know regular migraines but with no rhyme or reason no set pattern nothing well then after I got Stevens Johnson syndrome it was weird I had this like weird shift in the way that I would get migraines rather than just getting them randomly willy-nilly I would start getting them like uh 
I don't know if I would say it is a cluster headache because I'm not a doctor, but I would start getting them like in clusters. So I would not have a migraine for like six, eight weeks, and then I would get them back to back to back like eight days in a row, five days in a row, sometimes two weeks straight um, where I would just get them day after day after day. And then, you know, I have a rescue med that I take, which is called, um, what is it called? It's Rizotriptan is like the generic name, but it's um, Maxalt is like the name brand name um, for the rescue med I take. And number one, I hate taking it because the side effects are horrible. Like it turns me into a freaking zombie uh, when I take it. So I hate taking it. But also you can't, you're not supposed to take it like eight, 14 days in a row. You're only supposed to take it like, you know, maybe four days in a row max um, or it loses its effectiveness. It's just not good for you to use it that much. So, um, so then I got to the point, like I was saying, where I was up to about 16 migraines per month. And at that point, um, my doctor was talking about potentially doing Botox for me, uh, as a preventative, but around that same time, as we were kind of discussing that option, um, a couple of new injectable preventatives came out, um, and I know that there are maybe like three or four of them at this point, but at that time there was um, Emgality and I think the other one was called like a Jovi or something like that. So I started on the one called Emgality. That one actually had the least amount of reported side effects than any of the others. Um, so I started on Emgality and within like a month I was down to like two headaches per month. It was amazing. Um, and it's worked quite well for me for quite some time now. I've been on it for about two years and it's been very effective. I mean, I've been down to about four or so headaches per month, but every once in a while, typically at season change is when I'm getting these big stretches of headaches. So I think I had like a 10 day stretch back in uh, May, right around Memorial Day weekend or so, or maybe the weekend after. And then I had a big stretch just now at the end of October, which was two weeks long. And really all my doctor could provide me at that time was just giving me like a five day course of prednisone so that um, it would kind of like break that cycle um, if possible. But uh, it's really been stinking miserable. So today is like the second day from a two week headache binge basically. Um, so I'm on day two right now of no headache, thank God. So I think the cycle is broken, but we are having like some major weather shifts here in Michigan. We got like an inch of snow yesterday and then it's going to be 70. Sorry, I can't take this sweater off, I'm so hot. It's gonna be like 70 this weekend. So we're going from 30 degrees on Sunday, as in yesterday, and snow all day to 70 degrees, 70 degrees this coming Sunday. So that is West Michigan for you. But anyways, um, so, as I was saying, so I had this like horrid period of migraines and I just could not film for two weeks because I was like literally in bed nearly every dang day with headaches. So that explains that. Um, now currently, like I said, I'm still on the Mgality and I still take the Maxalt when I get a headache. Um, but one product that I will say was helpful, although it doesn't get rid of the headache, but it is soothing. I got um, in like one of my subscription boxes a couple seasons ago, I got one of those stainless steel like cold roller things. And um, it does feel really nice and gives some relief when you rub it like on your um, temples and like uh, my migraines tend to be really intense like right near my eyebrow here so I'll rub it over my eyebrow and around my eye socket and stuff and it was I mean it did feel really good it was helpful it didn't knock my headache out but it did give me some relief so can't complain about that I guess but anyways so that's my story about migraines if you are a migraine sufferer I would love to hear about your uh, treatment journey. And yes, I know that there are a lot of different like homeopathic suggestions, things like peppermint oils and stuff like that. But um, I will tell you, I have already tried it all. I've been on this journey for 10 years and for the severity of migraines, 
that I get, pharmaceutical options are my only relief. There is not a not a homeopathic method in this world that I have not tried that ever has worked. So um, I appreciate if you have those suggestions, but I will tell you I probably tried every single one of them at this point. It's pretty terrible. But if you're a migraine sufferer like myself, um, please share in the comments down below. What, what are you taking? What's working for you? Um, I would love to hear because obviously it seems like the amgality may be wearing off now, just like happens to me quite often with a lot of the medications that I've taken over the years. They work for a time and then they stop. Um, so for foundation, I'm going to go ahead and use this NARS um, foundation just because it does look really, really nice um, on camera. Uh, it's a little heavy for every day, but... When it comes to filling, it looks fan freaking fantastic. So anyways, that's my story about where I've been for the last two weeks. I'm hoping that I've kind of broken this cycle now and I can move on with my life and get back into filming some things because I've missed it. I always forget how little foundation you actually need with this NARS and this I will say like it definitely applies best with my hands um I was watching um oh you can see my patch thing I'm gonna take that off right now I thought it said on the package you could put makeup over it but clearly you can't um so I was watching like a tutorial from NARS itself and they were saying that the preferred method for application from their artists was with the hands because it helps warm up the product and kind of like melt it into your skin and probably will like follow up with a bit of a bit of a little dampened sponge here just to go over the top and kind of make it a little softer looking but Anyways, so, uh, what was I saying? I don't even remember now. That's a brush bath. I need a setting spray. Where's my setting spray? Okay, there it is. I'm just going to damp on my sponge with a little bit of setting spray because I don't have like a full-on wet sponge at the moment just to sort of do a little quick. Make sure I don't have any like cakey parts anywhere that are... You know what I mean. I can't talk. Oh, okay. so anyways. As I was saying. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'm going to get back into my regular routine of filming. Um, I want to do like another clothing haul video coming up here. And some more makeup stuff. I did get my hands um, on that um, child pat the child palette. The little baby Yoda palette from ColourPop that just came out. Thank goodness. Um that sold out very quickly so I was like really happy that I got my hands on one so that'll be a fun one to do like a little look with and stuff like that so that'll be good now the second thing I was going to talk about while we're doing this today is Ipsy okay so I did I got my Ipsy box back in September and I did like a head-to-head -head with Ipsy versus um my boxy charm for that same month and I was like astonished by my Ipsy Glam Bag. I thought, I was like, wow, it was worth so much. I got some really expensive, nice stuff in my bag. Um, all the products in there were all things that I would use. Um, I was really excited about it. So I was like, oh, this next month is going to be killer. And so October came and the choice day or whatever happened. And I'm actually going to set my whole face right now while we're, while we're at it. But anyways, so choice came and I was like, hmm, I'm not real excited about any of these products at all this month, quite frankly. And, um, which was kind of, you know, disappointing, but, um, it's like, yeah, whatever, I'll deal with it. Um, you know, you can't win them all. It's an, it's a subscription box ultimately, um, you know, so it's not always going to be like, um, 
complete win every time. But the one thing I was super, super excited about was they had as part of their add-on sale this gouache of stone. And I had seen, I think it was Jen Phelps, did something with a, a gouache of stone. Um, or she had gotten a gouache of stone and she did kind of like some before and after pics. And I felt like... Um, there was really like a big difference um, in kind of a uplift, you know, of her eyes and fine lines. And, you know, we're in the kind of the same age bracket, similar skin type. And so I felt like, um, you know, I could get some similar success. So they had this really nice, like $60 retail gouache stone for like 18 bucks. And I was really excited to get this gouache stone. Um, so I could try it out and I went and I got some 100% organic press rosehip oil to try with the gua sha stone and I was pumped. And then my bag comes and there's no gua sha stone in it. Um, and so I emailed Ipsy or maybe I did like a chat or whatever and um, they came back and granted this was something like I had paid 18 bucks for. This was in addition to my my bag itself and they emailed me back and were like oh sorry you realize you paid for it that's out of stock so you can't get it anymore so we're just gonna give you a credit on your account not even a refund but a credit of $18 to use on future or whatever and I thought that was kind of lame like they should have just refunded me if they can provide the product um, and I will tell you as well, when I got my Ipsy add-ons, one of the items that I received from Ipsy was broken. Or I mean from, from BoxyCharm was broken when I received my add-ons from them. And when I reached out to them, they were like, oh, we're so sorry, but we're, we're out of stock on those. If we can find one, we'll send it to you. But if not, we will refund you the full amount, right? Which is the way that it should be done. But apparently Ipsy just wants to give me a credit. So anyways, so I was a little, like, irritated because that was the one item in the whole dang bag that I was even excited to be getting, and then now I'm not going to get that. Um, so that was frustrating. But then, furthermore, they're not going to give me my money back. And um, also, I started looking at the spoilers. You know, I got on one of those spoiler sites for um, Ipsy's next month. Uh, items and again it was just like another round of things that like did not excite me at all and I it just felt like it wasn't worth the $25 to pay for this box of stuff that yeah the box itself would end up being worth more than the 25 that was paid but um, it wasn't stuff that I wanted or would have ever you know purchased on my own so I, I decided after that bad experience with the whole gua sha thing and with them not having anything in this newest box that I even really cared to have, um, I would just pause it for this month and, and see how it goes. I'm going to see if next month it's better and if it has a bunch of stuff next month that looks really good then I'll um, restart it. But if it's like a third bad month in a row of items that I just don't want or need, um, I think I'm just gonna cancel it. And to be honest, like with Boxy, the stuff I get, I'm also not overly excited about typically. Although it's good product, it's just not a lot of stuff I use. But um, the thing about Boxy is their add-ons are phenomenal. I mean, you can get some really high quality, high-end stuff for super cheap. For example, I didn't use this today, but I got this Becca um, Ultimate Coverage 24-Hour Foundation, which is like a $44 foundation or something, a $40 foundation, for six bucks. And this is really good foundation. Um, I also got this Natasha Denona Transfer Mat, which is also a really good foundation that I got for, I think, $9, which is normally $44 on the BoxyCharm add-on sale. So I really have to say that um, it's worth keeping simply, I mean, in my opinion, um, the box of charm is worth keeping simply for the add-ons 
alone. Again, my opinion, but um, I, I like it. And I just appreciated their customer service, I guess, a little bit more um, because they actually were willing to like refund my money to me um, that I had paid for this item that came broken and I couldn't use. And I mean, it was an item too that like, I guess I wasn't really like, it was really cute and fun little thing. It was like a little ceramic home decor item. It looked, it was like a little elephant, but it, it was gold and it looked like a balloon animal elephant. It was like a ceramic little thing that sits on your tabletop and it's cute. Um, but I mean, also wasn't like heartbroken that I didn't get it necessarily. Um, you know, disappointing, but not like the end of the world. So anyways, that's my story about why I paused Ipsy and why I'm thinking about canceling it. Um, but I do have a really good FabFitFun box that's going to be coming soon. And I've got a BoxyCharm box. And ugh, that's the other thing, BoxyCharm this month or next month. No, it's November now this month, um, is they've got a Natasha Denona mini palette in there and I want it so bad. That's the thing that bugs me about BoxyCharm and it's not their fault, but every time I see the spoilers, there'll be like five out of the 12 items that I really want and I never get any of them. <laughs> like never. I don't know what kind of luck or algorithm I... I'm falling into, but I can't ever get the items that I want, and it's a total bummer. But anyways, needless to say, that's my day. That's why I haven't been on in a while. That is why I've been lame. And like I said, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to film here shortly my um, favorite things of October. Uh, monthly video, albeit a couple days late, um, but sorry about the awkward pauses. It's hard to do things and talk at the same time. But anyways, so this is going to be my very natural, but I think pretty audition look makeup for this evening. So I will be on my Zoom call and I will be looking like this and doing my reading. So anyways, that's that. Um, let me know how you feel about Ipsy down below. Have you been finding that the bags have been duds lately the last few months? I don't know. Maybe um, it all depends on personal preference. I mean, you could have gotten the boxes or the bags that I got and have totally loved them. Um, that, it is just a personal preference thing, but that's, that's my opinion on it. And also, let's talk migraines. Commiserate with me. Tell me what you're taking, what works for you, um, anything like that. But anyways, I'm glad to be back. Thank you for being here with me. Sorry about the rambling. Um, and stay tuned for that favorites video because hopefully it will be coming up later today. Bye.